Now, this plant is a, is, is a miraculous plant because it is still following Africans wherever we are. We have some of these plants, most parts in, in the Caribbean. Yeah. We have some at Virginia, oh. Jamestown. Mm -hmm. We have some at Alabama. And I always tell my brothers and sisters, this plant saved our lives and it's still following us. So whenever you see this plant somewhere in the state, it's only telling you one thing. That thing that is saying to us is like this, Sankofa, mm -hmm. go back to your roots. Because you should know that this plant saved you from, 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 from being captured. So whenever you see this plant, wherever you are, tell, say to your brother and sister, it's time to return to my roots. So I thank you all for returning for your, to your roots. So you welcome to the central region of Ghana at St. Manso Slave Market to be precise. My name is Kofi because I'm a Friday male born. Uh, Roland is my slave name. Yes, I'm a Friday male born and I'm going to be your tour guide. Uh, but before we start with the tour, let's observe a minute of silence for all our enslaved brothers and sisters who lost their lives during the trade. After which I will say may they are so rest in perfect peace. And you all respond by saying Ashe. Ashe. So please, can we observe a minute of silence for our ancestors? Thank you very much. As you all know, our brothers and sisters were hunted, they were captured, and they were treated as merchandise. We were shipped across the Atlantic Ocean to work on plantations in the Caribbean and the Americas. As St. Mansu you see today was the greatest proof for the adoption of individuals, family, friends, relatives across the Atlantic Ocean to work on plantations. It was the biggest slave market during the transatlantic slave trade era, as documented by one British historian known as W.E. Ward in his book entitled The Short History of Ghana. Although there were some slave markets like the Piccolo slave market at the, at the Upper East region of Ghana, Salaga markets at the northern part of Ghana, Ketekashi slave markets and other slave markets as well, Asen Mansu slave markets here in the central region of Ghana, and the Salaga markets at the northern part of Ghana played a major role during the transatlantic slave trade. And slave Africans were captured from Ghana and countries that share border with Ghana at the north. That is Burkina Faso, Mali, and some parts of Nigeria. And they were made to march in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked to the Salaga market at the north. It was in the Salaga market that we had our first rest period. We were given just a few, a, a few breaks to relax. And after that, we were again made to march in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked to Asin Mansu slave market here, which was 300 miles from the Salaga market. During that era, because we were marching through the forest belt of our country, a lot of our ancestors were exposed to many dangers while marching them from the north to the central part of Ghana. Some of them were beaten by snakes, others were attacked by wild animals, others suffered punishment and brutality from the slave raiders. Research has it that 40% of our brothers and sisters while marching them from the north to Asin Mansu here lost their lives. Mm. One of their biggest challenges was at Chipopraso crossing the Pra River. So when you're coming from Kumase, there's this huge river that separates Kumase and this community called the Pra River. It is one of our greatest challenge for crossing that river. Basically, it was the survivor and the fittest. Only the strongest survived. So those of our brothers and sisters who were weak and couldn't continue with the journey, they were dumped in the river to die. Mm. Now, in 2004, the government of Ghana and that of Netherlands embarked on the project called the Slave Route Project. All that we wanted to identify was the path that our enslaved Africans were made to use while marching them from the north to the central part of Ghana. And one of the places that was identified was the Moli National Park. The Moli National Park is one of our wildlife reserves that we have at the northern part of Ghana, which boasts of all wild animals you could think of, the, the, the lions, the leopard, the, 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 every animal you could think of. We have some that. So, so currently, if you go to the Moli National Park, you are going to see those animals. 
So imagine our brothers and sisters walking through that thick forest with all these animals. That is why I said earlier that most of us were attacked by these animals. Now, when we are coming through the bushes, because the animals were feeding on us, the raiders have a way of pushing the animals back so that they don't attack us and them. And do you know what they did? What is first? Yes. When they are walking and they found out that two or three or four of our brothers and sisters were weak and couldn't continue with the journey, we were brought out of our chains, we were tied around any big tree they find in the forest, oh. left behind to perish. So, when the animals are also looking for something to feed on, they come into contact with our helpless ancestors and they feed on us. So they use us as bait to negotiate their way through the forest. So when they landed here at Asen Manso, this was a place that we were sorted out according to age and gender. Men separated from the boys, women, children, etc. And in determining our ages, a device called the speculum oris is put into, the, into our mouth, open our mouth, count our teeth, thereby focusing our ages. That's bad here, before being sold to the merchant. I said that is not enough. After selling us, we were again made to walk in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked, to the Cape Coast and Elimina Castle, which is 31 miles and 35 miles from here respectively, because that was where the slave ship was being dubbed. Now, during that era, wherever we were captured, it was a match of no return. We are going from our roots and we are never coming back. So when we go through the dungeons of the castles, there is this door with the inscription, the door of no return. This door of no return is not there to serve the purpose of we Africans. It is there to serve the purpose of those people, not we Africans. Because they thought with the door of no return, we are never going to come back to tell the story as it is. They thought all the atrocities that they committed on us, we are not going to come back to tell the story as it is. Mm -hmm. They thought our culture and traditions as Africans would be cleaned forever. Mm -hmm. Basically, they wanted to clean all the African race in their setting. But now, we are conscious enough to know where we are coming from. Ashe. Ashe. We are conscious to know our motivators and our ancestors. Ashe. We come to our roots as when as we love to return. Ashe. So, we need to change that writings, that perception, yeah. on the walls of the Cape Coast Castle, yes. from the door of yes. no return to the door, that, the door of no return that fits them, to the door of return which fits us, because yes. now I have my brothers and sisters yes. coming back to their roots. Yes, 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 yes. But the big question is, then, how do we change that writings on the walls of the Cape Coast Castle from the door of no return to the door of return? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is why, as you can see, in our ancestral graveyard, we have the mortal remains of our two great ancestors, Madame Krista and Samuel Kazim, they are so rest in perfect peace. Ashe. 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 Madame Krista was part of the Maroons who was captured and landed up in Jamaica as enslaved African. But because she was a mother, she couldn't stand the pain, the atrocities, the more treatments that was meted on one another. Mm -hmm. She couldn't see children crying for help. She couldn't see people calling for death to come their way. Mm -hmm. Because now most of us were scared to die. But during that era, we were calling for it to come to our, our aid. But even death was so scared of what was being per perpetrated on us. So this lady, in her own way, she decided to starve herself to death. But during that era, because we were classified as an asset to the, radio, to the merchants, we were forced to feed. So by doing so, they chisel your teeth and they force you to feed. These are some of the punishment Madame Krista had to endure. But yesterday, she stood on the ground and said, no, I'm not going to take in anything until she lost a life. Africans are the ones with the highest of IQ. Yeah. So I always tell my people, let's just ignore them. We shouldn't go to the end limit for them to defeat us because we know our world as Africans. Yes, brother. Yes. Now, so... Their ministry, so the mortal remains of Madame Krista and Samuel Cousin was thrown in from Jamaica and US respectively to the Kotoka International Airport in collaboration with their families and our Ministry of Tourism. Mm -hmm. Then by boat to the Atlantic Ocean to the Cape Coast Castle, oh. coming out from the door of wow. low return, oh. changing into the door of return yes. on the 31st day of July 1998. Yes. 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 Because it is assumed that all our brothers and sisters made their way through that door to the Caribbean and Americas. 
20 but years. none ever have returned to that same door to their roots. Oh. So with our mother, Madam Krista and Samuel Cousin returning from that same door to their roots, just to usher our brothers and sisters in the dust world that yeah. yes, okay. it is now safe to come to your roots. It is now safe to come to your country because this is where you belong. Yes. Okay. So, okay. the same day on the 31st of July, these two of our great ancestors, Madam Krista and Samuel Cousin, landed here at Asin Manso. Asin is an account word, which means, yes, sin, travelers, people that are just passing through. So, research has it that 60% of people that from this community were some of our enslaved Africans who managed to escape. Mm. But because they didn't know how to return to where they were captured, they formed part of this community. Mm. So, so when these two of our ancestors landed here, we already had the connection, we already had the chemistry with them. It was, it, was, uh, it, was a wonderful, it was a wonderful day. Everybody in this community were made to wear black. We had vigil for our ancestors, we mourn our ancestors. And the following day, which was, which was the first of August, these two of our great ancestors, Madame Krista and Samuel Cousin, were buried here. So every first of August is when Ghana, as a nation, we decided to celebrate our Emancipation Festival. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my brothers from the diaspora always ask me, Kofi, what, 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 is your, what do you understand by the word Emancipation? I always tell them I always have my own way because everything that I say should come from my heart. I always tell them it's the day that Africans from the diaspora and Africans everywhere, we come together to take stock from where we started as Africans, from where we are now as Africans, and where we want to be tomorrow as Africans. Yes. So together in one accord, we all strategize on how to make ourselves better and stronger again. Yes. 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 Now, as you can see, we have portraits of freedom fighters, human rights activists. Most of them are coming from your hand. Mm -hmm. There is one thing that we, we observe. We thought most of our brothers from the diaspora feel this disconnection between you and I. There's this disconnection that you feel is happening. But it's not happening because these people are there to just brainwash us. All the ancestors that fought for you, for the abolishment of slavery, for the promotion of human rights, we see them as our ancestors. And whenever we are praying, whenever we are pouring libation, we acknowledge their names. So it is prudent and right to acknowledge these great ancestors on our ancestral roots. So that is why we have all these portraits to show this. Now, I'm going to take you to one beautiful plant. Most of us would also be captured as captives. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you some indigenous knowledge about that plant and I, will, uh, and I will illustrate how it saved a lot of our lives. So if you wouldn't mind, can we please go to that beautiful plant that saved a lot of our lives? Hey. So this... Just touch it you see before? Yes. I'll tell you everything about it. It's not something that you just have to see. You have to know something about this plant. Okay. Uh, this plant wow. here is called the mimosa plant. The mimosa plant. The mimosa. And it has this indigenous knowledge attached to it that I told you earlier on. You see, during the time of slavery, uh, most of our brothers and sisters did not want to be captured as captives. So we went hiding in caves and mountains so that we would not be captured. So at our hiding places, we grew a lot of these plants to surround wherever we were. So this plant informed our decision whether to come out or to stay indoors. Wow. So wow. early morning, the elder of the clan would peep through the holes to see whether the plant is as open as we can see now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when it closes, it takes like 30 minutes before it, it opens back again. So when you observe that the plant is as open as we can see now, which means it is safer out there, Come out and do whatever you feel like doing before mm -hmm. returning back to your roots. Mm -hmm. Also, when you wake up and find out that the plant is something like this, which means it is not safe. They, which means it is not safe. These people are there wanting to, to capture us. So please don't come out and stay at your hiding place. So this plant saved a lot, a lot of our brothers during that era. Now, this plant is a, is, is a miraculous plant because it is still following Africans wherever we are. We have some of these plants, most parts in, in the Caribbean. Yes. We have some at Virginia, oh. Jamestown. Mm -hmm. We have some at Alabama. And I always tell my brothers and sisters, this plant saved our lives and it's still following us. So whenever you see this plant somewhere in the state, it's only telling you one thing. That thing that is saying to us is like this, Sankofa. Mm -hmm. Go back to your roots. Yes. Because you should know that this plant saved you from, 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 from being captured. Yeah. So whenever you see this plant, wherever you are, tell, say to your brother and sister, it's time to return to my roots. Sometimes when our ancestors were going, they didn't know where they were going. 
they didn't know what is up to them, what they are going to experience. They, they, were, they didn't know anything. So they just have to sing to motivate themselves. Because that is why Africans will love to sing. Because singing is what motivates we as Africans. So sometimes when we are going, I don't know where the spirit is, I don't know who is touched by something, but if you feel like bringing a song out, feel free, bring that song out, let's, let's sing together. Let's sing together. So we will take this opportunity to remember, to remember our ancestors for all that they've gone through. So I don't mind if you have a song, you can bring the song. Although I might not know how to sing, I'll try to sing along. Yes, as we go. Yes. Way in the water. In the water, the water, the water, the water, the the water, the the trees you see over here serves as camp for the rivers. So when they bring, when they bring their captive, they turn them around, they're waiting for them to take their land back before selling them. Now at the slave camp, we don't sell enslaved Africans at the camp. But uh, those people, they come to the camp, the big men, they come to the camp and choose the best of us before the rest will be taken to the market to be auctioned out. So those people will be here Waiting to buy the best of our enslaved Africans. Now, this river you see right here is a very huge river. Sometimes when it rains, it flat all the way here. You can get closer. Now, this river is two separate rivers. There are two separate rivers. They are not the same river. This one over there is called River Emisa. This one is called River Emisa. Uh, we get yes, River Emisa. The flowing one is called River Emisa. This gets its source from the Pearl River. The same river we were dumped into to die. This river gets its source from that same river. Mm. Then we have this river also to be Nonkonsu. Nonkonsu, which literally means the Slave River. This one. Our brothers and sisters were made to wash themselves in the Nonkonsu, but not in the Emisa, because with the Nonkonsu, it is always stagnant. Because they were scared that when they made us wash ourselves here, we might escape. So they made us wash ourselves in the standard stagnant water, still in chains and in shackles. The question is, how can you wash yourself while you are in chains and shackles? That is the job of the readers. And by doing so, you see this tree, this bamboo tree over there, the smallest part of it, they catch it and they split it open and they use it to wash our enslaved captives. So after washing us, you find out that almost all of us have bruises all over our body with blood oozing out. They do that for a purpose. After that, with all the blood coming out, they bring us from the river to where we are all standing and they make us go through vigorous exercises just to determine our strength. Because it is assumed that if all this blood can be coming out from us for us to undertake such an exercise, that makes us a stronger people. So after all those exercises, they clean all the blood from us and they smear us with palm oil and share butter just for us to look attractive. In the olden days, there was this big baobab tree which was situated at where we have our first auction. So they take them to the, the baobab tree and they chain us around the baobab tree for our first auction. Basically, our brothers and sisters were bought with things that are not really, really important. It is not really important the thing that they bought us with. Things like, they bought us with things like used clothes, tobacco, whiskey, gunpowder, uh, 
pet those petty things that they were and i was reading a book on the transatlantic slave trade and it's made this revelation which when i when i when i knew of it i i cried this deep inside me during that era one us goes for 15 strong enslaved africans mm -hmm. so during that era even animals were valuable than we africans oh, and the same. the same thing that they, are, they did to us in the past they are still doing the same thing now yes. 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 wherever you're coming from they have all these rights for animal they call it yes. animal rights animal rights yes. but when you kill a black person you become a celebrity nobody yes. cares about us yes. Yes. all these things all this that they are doing to us as a president from the past so that is why it is good for you to come to your roots so that you know your story you know where you're coming from so that when these things happen to you you know how to overcome it now i would i would say you guys ought to forgive me because the thing that i come to say is something that some of you will not forgive me when i start but when i end all of you I, i'm sure will, will, will forgive me there's this group at the us of that i love so much in my own way and this group are the white supremacists. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yes. 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 I, I love this group. Do you know why? Because Africans have stand have stood so low for people to know our destiny than ourselves. Our destiny is for ourselves. It's not for them. So why would you allow them to know your destiny? Why are you yourself as African you don't know your destiny? Yeah. Yes. Africans see we see ourselves as God and we always say we are born to occupy all the land that God gives us mm. so everywhere we go as Africans we are seen as a threat because that land right. that land that you see us there we are about to occupy that land yes. they are seeing your destiny as Africans yes. things that we should see as Africans we are not seeing and they are seeing it mm. so rather you see if I'm a white person and, and I date you and we give birth your baby is not going to look like me. It will look like you. Because we are the dominant species. Yes. So as long as it is, they know. So they are trying to do everything to bring us to their level and defeat us. And we are also going to that same level for them to defeat us. No, we should tell them that we are way, way, way far beyond that. Yes. Yes. We, are that we, are, we are too, I don't know, we are, we are above what they are thinking. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, during that era, we have Africans who can just look at the sky and predict that it's going to rain at exactly 2 o'clock and it will rain. We have people who just who couldn't give birth to, to anybody, but it's the mother of everybody. We have special people in our, in, in our midst because we see ourselves as gods. So Africans, wherever you are, never ever feel yourself inferior because you are not. You never. You never. Because the, 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 try, the, the, the more they try to damp us, to damp our spirits, the more we always come out stronger as yes. Africans. Oh. But I always plead that the one, one thing that can, that can make we Africans stand is for us to be united. Yes. 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 Because even those people are united. Mm -hmm. That is why they are always leading the race. Mm -hmm. But imagine if all Africans that we call our source yes so sometimes just imagine we will be unstoppable so please as you've come to your ancestral roots you are uh, you are uh, ambassador to whatever is about yes. to happen in africans life yes try to motivate one another try to come together as one because when we are together as one in the tree language we always say prior away it's a tree uh, proverb which means uh, when you take one stick out of a, a bunch of broom, you only break it, it breaks. But when you put all the broom together and you break it, it doesn't break. So Africans, when we come together like that, you matter how much they break us, we will never break as Africans. Ancestors are always here to bless us because it's been a while since they set their eyes on you. You have many things that they, they have many things in kept for you and it's only yours and it's up to you to take your possession. But now, our ancestors, who are our ancestors? Somebody may ask, who are our ancestors? They are Kofi Kwame, they are Kojo, they are Sojuna Truth, they are Mark Tunuk Mitakin, they are Malcolm X, they are James Padmore, they are Arab Tugma. All these people are our ancestors. So today, as we come together in the spirit to have this connection with our ancestors, this is what I'm going to give you about two minutes of your time for you to strictly meditate and ask them 
for whatever you feel like accident. Just meditate on it and just tell them Megasi. Thank them for hey, Mukwetre. Thank them for all that they've done for us as Africans in our lives for two minutes. And after the two minutes, we'll be going, we'll be going down to the river. We are going to meditate by putting our hands. So I think meditation should rather be downwards. You go to the river, you dip your hand in the river, you just pour your heart out to your ancestors. Then after that, I'm going to give each one of each one of you here a gift. Yes, which is a very, very special gift. And I'm going to give each one of you here a gift. So if you wouldn't, wouldn't you wouldn't mind, can we please go downwards? So that we will perform the rituals down down there. It's working when it's back. Well, you don't have to be. What about that? Confusion is a decision. Okay, so please. You want me to drink and let uh, uh, snap me? Abo! Amen! Please come this way. We have the last ritual before we go back to where we're coming from. I think the the men, the men, yeah, the men have to support the, 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 the ladies. Come on. This is the wall that many people who's come from over across the globe who returned home that you can sign your name.
Take a body, take a body, take a body.